guys, we're back for another episode of uh, Powerlifting Talks. Um, just before we get started, if you please like and subscribe, it would make my day. It takes two seconds of your day. Anyways, let's get right into it. So today, there's two things I want to focus. Something I did pretty good, and something I did really bad, which I'm only just starting to notice. Now, with my warmth of deadlifting, as most know if you ever deadlifted, it's really taxing. So generally, I don't do too many reps. But the reps I do do, especially before it gets remotely heavy, I try to be really slow. Right here, I'm just rowing. I like to do rows that also kind of warm up the erectors a bit for stability and the lats, of course. Now, something I do really good here is every single time I deadlift, I try to make sure my feet are perfect. Another thing here is I try to make my arms really long. Now, watch my lats. They're going to pull back and in. That creates so much more of a good like shelf and stability up near the traps and stuff because otherwise that's where people started the round if you ever looked at any of my old deadlift videos i was really bad with this now something that you probably can't really notice just yet which i'm only really starting to get somewhat good at is hips here you can see my hips kind of rise in my back at the same time but not to spoil anything but later on i do it very very badly again just rowing really helps me from up here now I'm onto two plates. I'm still gonna do about five reps here. Again, pretty slow. Make sure the feet are really good. And now something else, which I notice if I ever try to teach people deadlifting in the gym, is see how when I bend down my shins actually go forward. Before when I would deadlift, I'd put the bar right at my shins when my shins are vertical. This is bad. Now mind you, a squat is not a deadlift, but you still need to bend your legs unless you have insanely long arms. So I'm gonna basically how you wanna do it is you position your feet so that when you bend down just enough to be able to grab the bar, the bar is touching your shins. That is your perfect position. For me, right before it gets to the kind of gritty part on my bar, I put that little line right in the middle of my foot. See, I'm really trying to line it up here. Middle of the foot as in up and down and side to side. Nice and nice and locked. Again, I really want to make sure. Again, see, I'm going to make my arms, arms nice and long, just like that. Bend down just enough to see the second I can grab it, my shins are touching. Now, something you also might notice is there's something called the stretch reflex. And basically, you don't want to spend too much time in that bottom position. See here, before I go to set up again, my legs are nice and long, and then I sink down and go. Basically, that's it's like a stretch reflex. So when you go down, you're going to have all this power coming out of it. And it's going to help you a lot. If you spend too much time in that bottom position, you might lose that. Okay, so now I'm on the three plates. Even though three plates, it's still pretty easy. I can do a set of five for this at RPE five and feel fine. I'm only going to do one rep because we're going for one rep max today. Is that that smart after doing a bench PR? Probably not, but you know what? Our program's definitely not perfect. It's even there. It looked clean. And you probably can't notice too much of the hips are the problem. But they are my problem. I used to think my grip was my problem, and it still kind of is. I'm using straps for 365 here. Not that I've not done it strapless, but again, if I'm going for a PR, I want to make sure I'm not too tired. So, another good thing is, well, if you're going for a PR and you don't want to be too tired, then why don't you just go plate by plate? Well, for me, it, it, it depends. So basically, you want to do enough practice sets, I'm going to call them, so that your brain is used to the weight. But of course, you don't want to do too much where it gets too heavy. So this is my second last warm up here. And sorry for the camera angle. I kind of messed up here. Well, it's four plates. And again, four plates is still, still kind of hard. I can do it for like three, but nothing to play around with. Now, you'll notice here what my problem is. My problem is I don't drive my hips into it enough. You'll even see it more exaggerated later. But again, I'm going to stay up. Then I'm going to bend down and gauge slats. See how my back starts to kind of go up before my legs? Like, it's not in equilibrium there. That's not good. And now it gets even worse here. Here's 445. This would be an old PR if this was a couple months ago. Still in position my feet really nicely here. Nice and long arms. Now you'll really kind of notice the hips here. It's bad. It's really bad. It's good, though. Sometimes you got to record yourself to see what you do wrong. And now that I know what to do wrong, I know what cue I need to focus on. So again, get that stretch reflex, lats engaged into the back pocket. See right there, if I was driving my hips into the bar more, that probably wouldn't have happened. I'd be much, much stronger. Now here's a really bad example of not driving my hips. Here's our PR. 
475. This is a 20 pound PR if we lift it right here. And you might notice, yes, I do salts here and there. Definitely don't, it's something you shouldn't do very often, but it can definitely help you move some more weight. So I was definitely getting a little carried away here. This is a goal I really wanted for a little bit, but you know, it's tough. It's real tough. So another thing is, yes, I use straps. My grip's not the greatest, but honestly, if your grip's really good, don't use straps because then I'm in that bottom position longer. It's not good. See, so watch this. I'm kind of focusing on my grip. You can see the lats. I do the line engagement really nice. But you'll notice right here, I'm pulling. My hips aren't getting closer to the bar, and I drop. Couldn't do it. Pretty disappointed. But you know me. It's not the end here. Stupid to do, but I'm going again. So I even mentioned to myself, yes, it is a little stupid to do. Honestly, if you fail this, you probably shouldn't go for it again, and this kind of affects the rest of my work right here. But we said, screw it. And now again, I watched that back. Now this is why I record, because you can watch it back and see what you messed up on. And I personally think it's a hip problem. I'm not driving my hips into the bar enough. Now I definitely do it better here. It's not great, but I definitely do it better. I was more aware of it. Because I, when I got to my knees on the other rep, I wasn't really pushing with my hips. And that's what I do here really well. Don't stay silent. See, I was really, really happy there. Sorry if you hear my dog there. <laughs> but yeah, I was super, super happy again. I probably shouldn't have done it. Now you'll see why. I probably shouldn't have done it here, but again, I'm super happy. Now we get into low bar squats and hold up. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm squatting and deadlifting on the same day. Yes, this is true. But for me, I found before if I would squat or a deadlift even like two days later, I'd just be kind of either weak in the back or a little bit weak in the legs. So again, I'm just warming up here. Again, right here. I do my warm ups pretty slow. Same with squats. I'm a bigger guy, I'm a taller guy, I'm like 6'2. Just squatting, it's a lot of range of motion for me, so again, I don't do too many reps I'm on the one plate. And again, after that second deadlift attempt, which I got, which I was happy, it was pretty rough, but we got it. Okay, that's what matters. <laughs> but I was tired here. Even when I'm with one plate, I was like, oh man, like, oof, my lower back's getting cooked. But again, now another thing you might notice, right before I go down, I will go up. See that? I push my hips back. This is one of the biggest techniques that's so simple to, like, put into your squat, and it makes such a difference. And you also might notice, ideally you want a pretty straight bar path. I kind of go down and then up on an angle. Now, I do have to lean forward more. I have pretty long femurs, but ideally you might also kind of notice here. That the weight gets heavier, I can be a bit more upright because I have more power. I can drive into the bar, and that's another thing. With my hands and my lats and my traps here, I am digging that bar into myself because I'm making more tension. Tension, tension, tension. Super, super important here. Even me warming up with two plates here, which we did this for five. I was like, man, that really got me. Now, another thing, which maybe isn't the smartest here, before. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm getting too far ahead of myself. Since it's our heavy day, I decided I'm going to do heavy walkouts, static walkouts with the squat. Now, normally, I'd go two plates with 275, but I said screw it, we're going to do three plates. And now, even when I'm doing a heavy squat walkout for my warm-up, I'm still going to squat heavy-ish. And then I'll do a warm-up walk, walkout with a weight I've already been able to done be easily be able to do and this video will be 365 and I'm holding that for about 10 seconds when I go to my actual actual walkout sets here they're gonna be 15 seconds these are amazing I only started doing these really recently but I've noticed that I can just fire more muscle fibers at once it can also help mentally because think about this way I'm gonna be holding up weights heavier than I can squat right now 
But when the time goes, for example, I'm going to be going for a 420, 415 in like maybe a month or so, a little bit less. It's going to be, I'm going to walk up the bar, I'm going to put it in my back, and I'm going to think to myself, I have felt heavier than this before. So it helps a lot mentally. Now, I'm not just, just standing there. I'm going to have a slight bend in my knees for safety. And I'm practicing breathing while I am bracing, which is also really important. So you do a pod squat or you know, like your long range of motion. Might have to have a breath in there. So now, here's another good question. How much more weight? So I've squatted four or five, and I'm going 40 pounds above that. Sometimes people like to say five or ten percent over your one rep max, but honestly, it's just too much math. I'd like to go in a pound ratio. So for me, about 40 to 35, even 50 pounds over is a good weight. And now remember, I'm fatigued doing this. So ideally, every single time I do my neck static holds, I'm gonna go heavier and heavier and heavier. I do this for bench as well. Okay, I'm just standing there. If you look in the mirror here, I'm trying to brace, I'm trying to breathe. That's why I'm making funny faces here. And this helps so much. It also just teaches your body how to stay tight and tension for longer. Now, 15 seconds in my head's probably a little quicker than it is in real life. But that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> yes, we are tired. So we do one more here. Now, normally, if I'm going for a PR, I'll say bench or squat, because you can't really do a static deadlift. There kind of can, but more on that in another episode. Is before I go for a PR, I wouldn't do a static hold, but I think now, if I'm going to go for a PR, I will do a static hold heavier than I'm going to lift. Again, it mentally prepares myself. makes a massive difference. I used to always look at walkouts and static holds and bench and be like, eh... Maybe it's good. No, guys, it is worth it. And another great thing is it feels heavy, but it's not fatiguing really at all. Like, these sets are not fatiguing. I'm just holding the weight. Okay. Again, we were really tired, so we're literally just doing one set. 225 here. Five reps. Again, just skill practice. And another big thing in powerlifting is getting good at what you do. So I'm going to go go kind of slow here again the bar path's not perfect but it's all about watching yourself seeing it and improving here so this is going to be about the end of the video um if anyone's made it this far thank you so much for watching please remember to like and subscribe it makes my day it doesn't take much out of your day beautiful all right everyone i hope you have a great day and i'll catch you in episode three of powerlifting talks